stuck in traffic on my way to Fleetwood. Uh, this weekend's shenanigans is not park run and it is not mountain biking, it is hopefully windsurfing. I have not done any windsurfing since the first, since the Friday, and I think it was the 22nd last year of July when we broke up from school. Uh, that Friday night I went straight in the van with boards on roof and everything to the lake where I'm a member of the windsurfing club, Water Lake, and uh, was windsurfing there. Had a thoroughly lovely night with Mrs. S and um, just, yeah, it was just great. Really nice weekend, in fact. And then I smashed my shoulder up on the Monday at uh, Gisborne Forest. So in a way, I think this might be an introduction to that. Um, I finally analyzed the video to the point where the GoPro footage of my coming off the bike my electric mountain bike I finally analyzed the GoPro footage and I think I figured out why I came off and I've been very reluctant as much as I really really enjoyed off-roading on the e-bike I've been very very reluctant to get back on it or any bicycle off-road or my motorbike um, and I think I needed to properly analyse the video footage. I'm literally doing three miles an hour. GPS says I'll be there by 20 past. I've never been to Fleetwood before. I was hoping to get there in the daylight, but one of my students wanted to have a chat about some bits and pieces, um, which I kind of do on a Friday night with a student. It's pretty cool actually just to chew the fat a little bit yeah so I think I'm hoping it'll still be daylight when I get there I was hoping to get there for sunset and take some drone footage that'll have to wait until tomorrow maybe I'll get some if I stay tomorrow as well and the weather's nice like it is tonight maybe I'll get some drone footage to add to this video Low tide is in an hour, so this is a, it's pretty low at the moment, which means in the morning low tide's uh, 7.40 I think. So hopefully by the time I'm up and changed for breakfast, messing about with all the stuff I've got to do. over there. It's not far really. I could probably windsurf across that easy enough. I can see why this is a windsurfer's uh, location. late towards the end of the day if I get a sail. I'll have to look at the tide times and see what time high tide is because there's no chance of us getting a sail on that without a six mile hike. This is what the lads were talking about I guess. Still you live and learn. I wonder what he's putting in there for, Marcus. What's, I wonder if that's high tide line. It is absolutely lush. Tide's out like and I am bitterly cold so I don't know 
we'll be harmed or anyway so I doubt very much I'll be windsurfing because it is absolutely bitter wait until April for windsurfing but lovely day for a walk along the beach but don't go wandering too far out from the beach at low tide on an unfamiliar beach because you might end up completely swimming in the mud flats and it can be very dangerous I should have known better really but hey The values we were given in this question are number one is 15 and number two is 39. We're going to uh, assume that the user's input number one on line one and number two on line two. So we're going on to line three, which says while number one is not equal to number two, which of course is evaluating to true. So we are acting out all of the things that are inside or executing all of the things that are inside of this while loop because number one is not equal to number two. So that condition is true. While loops, of course, are a conditional loop. We then have some selection. So on line four, it says if number one is greater than number two, then, well, actually, number one is not greater than number two. So I'm going to skip the contents of that statement and go straight on to line six's else statement, which tells me on line seven, number one is equal to number two minus number one, which is... 24. Um, I'm just going to drop a 15 in there because that keeps me, I know where I am then. I'm then going to go back because I've completed line 7 there. Line 8 says end the if statement, which is fine. Line 9 says end while, but I'm going to double check and see if I can end the while first by looking again at the condition. And the condition of the while statement is num1 is not equal to num2. Num1 is 15, num2 is 24, therefore they are not equal. So we are still in the while loop. If num1 is greater than num2, that is not the case because num2 is 24, num1 is 15. So we're still going to the else statement here. It says else num2 is equal to num2 minus num1. And that is 9 and 15 because 24 minus 15 is 9. Uh, line 8 says end the if. I'm going to jump, and then line 9 says end while. I'm gonna, just going to go back to line 3 and check and see if I can end the while. Well, the while statement, the condition, as we've already discussed, says number 1 is not equal to number 2. So that still evaluates to true. So we're going in and now, line 4, if number 1 is greater than number 2. In this instance, for the first time, while we've been going through this iteration, it is greater than. So we're going to take action with so action with line 4. 15 is greater than 9, so I'm going to take 9 away from 15, which leaves me with 6. That's still 9. We skip all of the rest of the if statement there and go to line 8, where it says end if, and then line 9 says end while. I'm going back to line 3, and it says while. Number one is not equal to number two. It's still the case that that evaluates to true. So I'm going back in. And again, it says if number one is greater than number two, it is not anymore. So we're going straight to line six and we're going to execute what's inside of that else part. And what's inside of that is line seven, number two minus number uh, one. And of course, nine minus six gives us three. That's still six. Again, end if on line eight. End while I'm going to double check the uh, line three and see if that's still true and it is still true because of course six is not equal to three so we're going in and again we've got this if number one is greater than number two then number one becomes number one minus number two and in this instance number one becomes three number two is three we've executed line five there so we're going to jump to the end if we don't look at the else at all once we've evaluated to one part of the selection statement, we don't then go back up, if you like. We we run straight through to the end if. So we're skipping all the lines in there until we get to line eight. And then line nine says end while. So we're gonna just double check and we go back to line three and it says while number one is not equal to number two. Well, actually number one and number two are equal. So we've come out of this loop. We are now past line nine. And we have the values 15, 15, 15, 6, 6, 3 for num1, num2, 39, 24, 9, 9, 3, 3, which I've written down here, but also 
some of you may find that num1 you just track changes in values so you might not write in i'll just show you what that would look like you might not write those in you might not write that in you might not write that in and you might not write that in and that's fine as well that's absolutely fine three values there and um you would still get all of the marks for that so back to the video what's that coming over the hill is it a robot is it a robot this is part of the problem as well I can't smell it but it stinks sewage pipe who wants to surf here who wants to go in the water here with this here sure I like this idea. So that sewage would be pumped straight into the channel and it's absolutely lived. It smells absolutely disgusting. Even walking away from it, it's just there. So it's what like 50 meters away and I can still smell it. It's absolutely rank. It's just what we're doing to the planet, what we're doing to our coastline, a beautiful coastline where everybody comes to walk the dogs and this park is just here. We're we'll enjoying a run in the morning. This coast could be full of people enjoying it, but we're polluting everything for for money. I was lucky. I must have zipped this up. This must be awesome for winter. If it was warmer, my hands would be a bit more than drop off. There should be one of these at every beach. So be aware. It's cool, isn't it? On the beach. I wish I'd brought the mountain bike, actually, because it would have been a lush ride this today. And it's too cold to winter for me. I'd only be in for there's no point in rigging up and then spending 10 minutes in the water with bitter cold hands. There must be a way. It's 2022. I must have invented some gloves that can be used winter. Everybody says, oh no, wetsuit gloves. You end up with your forearms all pumped up and it's agony. If they're thick enough to help keep the cold out, they're too thick for gripping it, you end up with big forearm pump. Must be able to do some kind of lithium battery waterproof. Strap the battery onto your sleeve maybe on each hand and then have heated gloves thin enough run the heat down the back of the hand maybe and have them thin enough so that it doesn't interfere with your grip on the boom or anything like that but maybe run some electrical or heating elements not even too strong just strong enough to make during the winter I need to go into a care home. This is the care home I want to go to. They look manky. And the staff probably beat the um, folk up. But this little boat and lake. I'll play with my little sailing boats that I've made. Model boats. And if I'm still fit enough, I'll be going swimming in this. And who knows, even maybe a bit of winging. Because I don't think I'll be strong enough to lift a sail at that point. Probably do some wing something. So we've got Yachtsman Care Home and Fairhaven Care Home. I wonder if there's like rivalry between them. I wonder if it's like two gangs.
spikes on their zimmers and stuff like that. Six weeks for an apple core. And that's the best of them. 45 years for a crisp packet. 400 years for a plastic can holder. 450 years for a plastic bottle. And 4 million for glass. Look at this camouflage coat. That's awesome. <laughs> that's that sewage outlet again. I can smell it from here. I knew it was there before I even saw it. It's disgusting. What the water companies get away with is unbelievable. These anglers are having a competition apparently. So I don't think that I is going to do any windsurfing. Um, one, my hands on the beach were freezing and I'm not even wet so I just don't fancy rigging up getting wet and suited up dragging all my gear out to the water getting wet hands and then 10 minutes later not being able to feel them and two there's an angling competition on the beach exactly where I would want to launch anyway so I don't think they'll be very happy with me if I'm uh, splishing and splashing around while they're trying to host an angling competition it's probably the last thing somebody who's trying to fish wants is some massive Geordie falling off a windsurfer board in the middle of the water where they're trying to peacefully get some fish so I think we'll do other things today. I wish I brought the bike. I really, really wish I brought the bike. This is an awesome place to go exploring on the bike, but I haven't. So work, I guess. I'll do a lot of schoolwork and then feel guilt-free when I want to do other things next weekend. Even, but how many of these are the anglers who are here for the competition and how busy will this be tonight I wonder after the competition's finished I think I'll come back here like look at the headland there is that what it's called headland it's beautiful look at this place it's beautiful 